Welcome everyone to the Rocky Neck Art Colonies Artist Talk with Sarah McEnany, a Philadelphia-based artist who is the 2024 Getteman Distinguished Artist and Teacher. My name is Jeff Marshall. I'm a member of the Getteman Residency Committee, and I became acquainted with Sarah's work actually from a, an exhibition catalog of hers that just followed me around my studio. Um, and so when the committee members were asked to suggest artists for this program, I immediately thought of Sarah. And to be honest, I thought it was a long shot, but here she is. So uh, I'm very excited. Uh -huh. She joins us tonight to give us a brief introduction to her work. Uh, tell us a little bit about the workshop she'll run at the Montserrat College of Art, August 5th through 8th. Um, Sarah will do a much better job of describing her work than I would. Though I think it is important to note that Sarah is often described as an artist and activist, uh, one who not only portrays the spaces where she exists, but also fights. For them. She has had many solo shows in New York and Philadelphia, among others, and is in numerous collections, including the Hood Museum of Art, the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art, and the Rhode Island School of Design. It is my great pleasure to introduce Sarah McEnany. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Um, I can't see anybody, but I appreciate you all being here. Um, what I've decided to do for this is to show you basically the last two shows, the show I had last fall in New York, and then the show that just went up here in Philadelphia. So last fall in New York, I had a show that I called The World Around a Mixed Bag, and it was three bodies of small works. And this first wall you're looking at are works on paper from the studio, um, self-portraits, my animal companions, objects. And these also often become collage elements in larger paintings. But so this wall had these paintings and uh, I consider them paintings even though they're on paper, sorry. So um, <laughs> this is the first wall of this a uh, show that I called The World Around a Mixed Bag. Um, and these are these small works on paper. They're all about nine by 12 inches, maybe a little bigger, some of them. And they are objects, you know, like a wine bottle, the sewing machine, um, animal companions, studies for painting, self-portrait, that I'm sort of always doing these at the same time that I'm making larger paintings as well. So there's the self-portrait. And so I just pulled out not all of them, but some of the ones from each wall as we sort of move around the gallery. This was a study for a large painting that was much more um, finished or detailed in a way, I guess you could say. And the animals are constant uh, sources of inspiration. <clears throat> objects this has um also has the collage element in it the behind the cat above the table is actually a photograph of one of my portfolios that i would use like if i'm painting outdoors so i took a photograph of that and then collaged it and printed it out on rice paper and then I collaged it into the painting. A little ceramic object. And the second wall had um, a series that I did as I watched the January 6th hearings, I uh, painted portraits of all the committee members and all the um, witnesses. So the top row are the committee members sitting in the order they sat in Congress. And um, and then, you know, I really was obsessed with wanting to watch them. But then I, when I hit on this idea of making portraits while I was watching them, I'm getting work done too. So um, I did all of these and it was important to me to show them together. They're not framed. They're just tacked to the wall. On the left is, um, I made this larger piece where I, uh, put my laptop on a can of Kills primer, and then I have um, Liz Cheney talking with Cassie Hutchinson. And there's a few of them. Mm. See them. 
And I, you know, I did them quickly while I was watching the hearings. I think I actually left everybody in. There's 35 of them all together. And there's the, um, and so for the one on the right, that's larger, it's maybe 18 by 24. And I actually took like the, took a snapshot of the Cassie Hutchinson and the Liz Cheney and printed them on the rice paper and collaged them into that. And then this entire thing was collaged into a painting, a large painting eventually that you will see coming up in a little while. And then the third wall, uh, this is the third wall. It was three walls for that show. And these are um, a bunch of paintings that I made when I did a residency in Ireland last summer The um, at the Tyrone Guthrie Center in Anna McCarrig, which is County Monaghan. It's one of those places where they have visual artists, writers, composers, and you know, basically feed you. And I was there for four weeks. So in for, and I, every, everything is small. These are all basically 12 by 12 inches or nine by 12 inches. They all fit in my suitcase. And, um, and I made some were on panel and some were on paper and made all these little paintings of that time there. So this one's called Arrival. And this is, and that, you know, was image. I put myself in here, pulling up my uh, suitcase up to my studio. My studio was one of these, behind one of these red doors in a former stable. And then on the left is a view around, around the other side, looking into the studio where I also washed my clothes because the washing machine was broken. So, you know, I made that little detail on the right washing my clothes in the studio sink. And these are two views of the lake. There was a beautiful lake there. It was a very chilly, but it was a good bracing swim to do. And the studio interior. When I do residencies, I tend to paint the studio when I get there, when it's empty, as sort of a way to get started and feel comfortable working in a new space. And a self-portrait, which is sort of how I am tiny in the painting on the left. And these are two from my um, the bedroom in the house that I had. So in the one, I'm I'm laying in bed and drawing, and there's a little cat outside the window, the window that has the yellow shrub, flower shrub bush. And then on the one on the right, I imagine that cat's view of looking in to me as I'm sleeping there. And like the one on the left, the rug on the floor, I don't remember. It was like an um, oriental rug, but I made the map of Ireland. So I often do things like that, sort of locate where I am by how I describe things. Two night paintings from that time in Ireland. Very long days, you know, it wouldn't get dark till 10 or 11. In fact, I was there for the solstice. And then the sun would be up at 4.30 in the morning. My laundry hanging on the left and a uh, a uh, greenhouse and sort of abandoned greenhouse structures on the right. And the cat again. The cat was allowed to visit us in our studios, wasn't allowed in the house. But my obsession with animals, I bonded with the cat. Now this is the um, the next or this the show that I have that just started at Locks Gallery in Philadelphia. It's called the name of the show is Morning, Noon, Night. And this one's called Night Studio. So this painting has some of those collage elements like the painting on the pink wall, that painting you'll see coming up. And then there's some of the objects in that distant a bookshelf area that are also collaged. Sometimes the studio paintings are much more chock full. And this one I was trying to keep a little more sparse, but I like having these detail areas that you zoom into sort of as you travel through the painting, some of the calmer areas, and then you have those moments of more intense detail. And this is called panel prep hearing. This is where I put the, um, 
collaged in the kills paint can with the laptop showing the January 6 hearings as if I was um, watching the hearings while I was gessoing panels. <laughs> Isn't exactly how it happened, but why not paint it that way, you know? And there's some other collage elements in here, like the door, the view into my office, which is where I'm sitting right now, in fact, that's lifted from a previous painting from quite a few years ago, just that scene just collaged and popped in there. But things like the tool belt and the level and the saw and those are all painted. So it's always a mix of that. And even when I do those collage elements, I always have to paint over them because I just use sort of a basic printer and I, the color's not right. And these are, both these two are four by six feet. Another four by six studio painting. And this is one of the most, the last ones I finished before the show went up. So I just finished this probably a couple of weeks ago, a month ago. And that I have a new dog. That was the one who you saw briefly. And she's there hanging out in her crate while I am drawing. And that behind me, you see an earlier version of this painting. So I take a photograph of it while it's just getting started and collage it in there. This one's called Summer Ritual. This one's four foot by four foot. All the ones in the show are generally four by four or four by six. Later, you will see this, the image of me at the table. And that is actually collaged in there. And you'll see a painting where I painted that bigger specifically to then shrink down and pop in there as a collage. This one's a diptych and it's actually three feet by seven feet. Originally it was just the section on the right, a three foot square, but I thought it needed more and then it ended up growing. And so it basically shows my going from right to left. It shows my kitchen, my dining area and my living room. And it shows me three different times, three different times of day, as well as, you know, the hair is shorter and then it gets longer and that the animals are in there several times, so, you know, three times. And lots of collage. Um, there's a, the, um, the two nighttime Ireland paintings are above where I'm there laying on the couch and an earlier painting above the dining table. And then the summer ritual painting you just saw is hanging in the kitchen because that's a morning ritual. And this is sort of a little different. This is um, from a, I spent a couple nights in Washington, D.C. last summer because I wanted to see the Philip Guston show. And the room had a pretty big window. Of course, I make it look even bigger and looked down on the swimming pool. It was very hot. It was August in Washington, D.C. And, uh, the, you know, the pool, I never got it. Never went into the pool because it was always full of screaming families and children. And But it was a great look and the light of it and then the highway nearby. So, And uh, it's called N-A-J-W in W-D-C. A-J-W stands for Andrew Jeffrey Wright, the artist who made that image that's on the back of my shirt. And it's actually the GOP elephant that is pooping into his own trunk. And when the Republican convention was in Philadelphia in 2000, that image was plastered all over the city. Uh, this one is called um, Blood Blood Red Election Day Moon. I'm, I'm Election Day Blood Red Moon. Anyway, <laughs> November 2022. And I'm um, walking my dog early in the morning. This is a four by four foot, as was the Washington DC one. And this one is winter 2023, I guess. That's my um, yard in Philadelphia, my garden that I have painted repeatedly, just like the studio over and over again. Also a four by four foot. And this one's called seven years, one month because that was how long I had my last dog, Mango, who you can see him sitting in the window 
But then this is also his burial painting. It's hard to see, but he's down in the sort of lower part where you sort of see an oval shape. And that's his resting spot. So it's sort of an homage to him. This one's called Sleep Away. Um, all the paintings on the wall that are collaged in are places where I'm sleeping other parts of the world like another residency in Ireland, one is Key West, there's Spain, there's Sri Lanka, different places. So, And uh, other elements are collage, like the newspaper. I painted this sort of crossword puzzle image bigger so I could get the detail and then I shrunk it down and collaged it in there. And even the books in the little bookcase next to the bed are, um, I paint them bigger so that then when I shrink them down, they're still legible. And so it's tiny, tiny, but it's still my hand, which I like. And this is called um, Summer Detail. And this was three foot by three foot. And that is what I made to specifically then shrink down and collage into the summer ritual painting. And then I went back and worked on it some more as a finished painting. And this is the last one. And this is called super blue moon. And this is a view of the um, rail park in Philadelphia, which is something I've been very involved in. I was one of the founders of this effort to turn an abandoned rail line, similar to the High Line in New York and similar to projects in many cities all around the world, actually, you know, under, you know, no longer used infrastructure being turned into public spaces. And it's right in my neighborhood and it's something I was obsessed with. And it took us like, you know, 20 years to get the first section open and I'm still involved in it. And that's where my activist tag comes from, basically from this kind of work. So I'm there all the time. I still on the board and I, I do volunteer work, you know, on the board as, you know, to as simple as, you know, picking up trash on a regular basis to then being more involved in trying to get further sections built. And I believe that's my last image. So I will stop sharing so you guys can be in control because of my, uh, let me see, how do I spell it? Okay, stop share. Good. <laughs> so I'm happy to answer any questions. I think people, could, we can, we have an, uh, enough group that we can just, if people want to, just uh, unmute themselves and ask a question, we can do that. Yeah, I think so. There was one question that came up while we were, while you were sh um, showing your work, um, Tanya asked what your medium is. And I just want to make sure I gave her the correct answer. So you're working in acrylic and um, collage. Essentially. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, and the, um, the, the small works on paper are acrylic and sometimes gouache and uh, colored pencil also. I like these Derwent in ink tense pencils. They're water soluble. And I use them even with the, um, I use them to draw on the panels when I'm starting acrylic paintings. Yeah. I'm gonna jump in with a, with a question, uh, Sarah, just because I think it, it, it sort of speaks to a little, little bit of what's going on. One of the, in some of your interviews, you've mentioned your work as creative nonfiction. Can you? Talk a little bit about that, about sure. where that. Well, I, I like that phrase. I mean, um, I like that kind of literature as well, but because they're, you know, they are autobiographical and they're narrative, but I do plenty of embellishing. I edit, I make things up, I fantasize. So they're not, you know, they're not a uh, documentary, you know, they're very, like I said, I embellish, I make things up, I fantasize, I leave things out. They're very crafted. And can you say more about your decision to really make them autobiographical? I mean, I, I love that in your work and I'm fascinated by it. And I'm just wondering if you'd say more about that decision. Okay, well, I guess um, even when I was in art school, which now is like, 50 years ago or close to like 45 years ago or so I was in art school and you know you'd at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts you'd be in a big beautiful room that you know you'd be working from a model and instead of just painting the model I'd paint the whole room and like the other students and 
so I was already sort of looking at the whole sort of space and creating narratives. And I started making paintings of like friends in their studios when I was in school, you know, and me in my studio. And then once I left school and it's sort of, I, I even did that for a while still, but I just, it became more um, about my particular life. Although I believe, you know, like when you're, when you are honest and personal, it becomes universal because we all go through a lot of the same kind of things. And I also like people to bring their own stories to the work. It doesn't have to be read as my story. Um, so I don't know, it just, it just sort of happened. And then I just kept doing it and then looking back on it now. And it's also really interesting for me to see how I change and then see that happening in the work. Uh, I I have one more question, although I think there's a question in the chat, so maybe do that first, huh? There's a, a question is, uh, can you tell me how you will guide the workshop? So maybe a little bit about what uh, someone coming to one of your workshops when you're visiting artists would, could expect. Well, like what, um, you know, and you and I sort of talked about it in an email, Jeff, about that, uh, and you helped me <laughs> actually word it, um, because... I don't, I'm not going to be teaching any kind of techniques or anything like that. People, I'm assuming the people who are coming to this are have ways of working and interests and sort of know some of what they are want, but that with um, critiques, and I think, I believe a lot in group cr critiques and discussion of like what interests you and what art you're looking at and I would bring what I'm interested in and have discussions, but that a lot of individual, you know, guidance and critique and discussion as well as group crits. Hmm. If a student was interested in, in techniques that you've used, would that be something that, that you might be able to have? You know, because sure. what you're you're because you've you've talked about a number of, of also interesting techniques, also the fact that you went from tempera painting to acrylic, right. then right. these collage elements. Sure. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. But that, um, I would like the people to bring, if they have questions of things right. they want, you know, like bring that. And if I can guide that or help that, you know, or together we can do a little research and figure out. But um, I just think, you know, everybody has things they know that inspire them. And maybe you expand on that or, you know, by by having the discussions in group crits or individual crits and that kind of thing. So the other thing I'm fascinated by in your work is how you construct these big spaces and these rooms. And, you know, I'm I'm thinking of the one in D.C. where you have the immediacy of the hotel room, then you have the pool and then you have that whole complicated highway area. And even the studio paintings, there's something about how you're looking at a space that it's really very complicated, but it reads very simply. And I, I'm just curious, like, that looks very difficult to me, but it's something I'm really interested in doing. How, how, how did you come to do that? Is it just practice? How might you coach someone in gaining some of those ways of looking? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the studio paintings, you know, I've been working in the same studio for like 45 years now. And so I'm very used to it. And it's a lot of direct observation mapping it out. But of course, as you said, you know, I think, but I'll often start by like, okay, for this painting, I know I want to get that closet over there. And I want to include this, you know, the washing machine over there. How am I going to do that? And and I do a lot of that very simple thing where you hold a pencil out, you know, and you, to me, <laughs> it totally works. And um, I also, for those kind of architectural things, like I have a lot of bricks. I actually, I literally count how many bricks are going up my wall. And then when I'm mapping it out, I, and then I use, I know a brick is about four inches and I use that m as a measuring tool when I'm mapping out the whole room. And I also... I spent many years working as a carpenter for my day job. So I'm I'm very 
clear about what four by eight piece of sheetrock is and how that, and that helps me map out rooms and stuff. Mm -hmm. The hotel room was a little more imaginative. I made some very simple sketches and I think I took some pictures out the window of how the cars looked going by, but I had to really make up a lot of it, you know, and just sort of see what works. And a lot of that comes from years and years of constructing spaces that helps me do that. And, you know, yeah, that's if people are interested in figuring out how to construct a space, I could certainly help with that. Uh, we have a question. Hold on, I can't read the whole thing right now. I'm curious how the small paintings on the wall that you showed from New York inform the larger paintings. Do you do them in conjunction with the large works? And you said some of them were studies and get collaged in. Just curious how you balance the two. Um, well, yeah, I'm I'm kind of doing them at the same time. You know, it's like if I'm working on a couple of big paintings and I work on more than one at a time, um, two or three or maybe more. Sometimes, you know, you're just feeling a little stuck and there's the cat sitting there in a perfect pose. And so I'll just I always have paper on hand and I'll just do that as a way to take a break from working on a big painting or sometimes I'm painting those objects like the wine bottle or the sewing machine specifically because I know I want to then collage them into something and I'm painting them bigger than they're going to be end up in the painting um and then you know like the Ireland ones I, I was like I said I was traveling and I just everything fit into a suitcase so there was no way I was going to make big paintings but I think of them as finished paintings. They're not studies for when I get home. I'm not going to make big paintings. Like they are about being in that place. And then like the January 6th ones, you know, I just working quickly on small pieces of paper as I'm watching those hearings. So it's a real, you know, it's, you know, different sources, you know, from my head, from observation, from the screen. And do you work from photographs for these things? Like I'm thinking of pictures of you in this and therefore you're obviously not working strictly from observation. Right, because right. You're oh, yeah, I, I use a mirror. I'll use photographs when I need to. Um, you know, I, when I was in art school, maybe because I was at the Pennsylvania Academy, I was like, I can't use photographs. That's cheating, you know, but uh, I got over that a long time ago. And I basically use whatever I need to get what I want to get done. Um, you know, I remember one time many years ago, I was doing a painting that included some horses in it. And I don't, I can't draw a horse and I, it's not easy to me to go look at one. So I looked up horses online or I, I have a lot of reference books. I have like Moybridge and I have other, you know, reference books and figures doing different things. And I'll flip through those. I have field guides to trees, plants, animals. I love books like that. I love having reference material. Why don't we take a, a couple more questions and then um, we'll we'll wrap up here. Does anyone have another question for Sarah? There's someone with their hand up. Oh, okay. It's muted. You can just unmute and ask. I don't see that person. Who's got their hand up? <laughs> well, I'll ask another question because another thing that came up in some of your interviews that you you talked about was the importance of I think if I'm if I'm getting this right, the time of day that was really important to you. Can you talk about that? Sure, and that, I mean, and that's very important in the current show that I have at um, Locks, you know, and that's why the show is titled Morning, Noon, Night. Because I've never really, I don't do so much in terms of like shadows, you know, you don't really see shadows, but yeah, time of day, whether it's day or night or morning or that, that sort of like early morning when it's like a dark blue sky. Um, you know, it's often part of the narrative, you know, like when I'm sitting outside with my cup of tea and the newspaper every day, that's absolutely morning. It couldn't be any other time. There's a question in the um, the yeah, chat I, again that says, uh, thank you. When you paint the bigger than, paint them bigger and then reduce, do you print and then collage the print into the painting? And I'd like to add to that question. I'm just curious about why. Like, I just love this idea that you're painting little paintings so that then you can put them in the big painting I mean and I say that why with great admiration it's just like fascinates me that this is your process 
Well, I, I found this, um, it's a digital rice paper and that's what I print them on. And actually what started this was, so during the Trump administration, or actually when he first started running the first time, um, I started because I'm a newspaper junkie. Whenever he was in the news, which was too often, his face, uh, pictures, I would alter them with like a Sharpie. And then I... <laughs> And I and I would take a photograph of it with my phone and I put it on Instagram. And it was just like this little Instagram project. I called it We Have No Presence. So I did it all throughout from around May of 2016 and then all the way until after the November 2020 election. And while I was doing those, you know, like, and a couple of times I showed them. I didn't often save the actual newspaper, but I printed out on this rice paper because it sort of looks like newsprint in a way. A bunch of those when... I had two different shows in Philadelphia where galleries wanted to include those. So then I, then I wanted to include them in one of us in a studio painting. And I thought, Ugh, I can't paint these ugly images, you know? And so I, that's when I got the idea, Oh, I'm just going to print them out small, like um, contact size. And I, and just stuck them in a studio painting as if they were haphazardly stuck on the wall, as well as I was standing in that studio painting. I put them under my feet like I was stepping on them. And so that was the very first time I did the collage. And then I thought, oh, all these years I've been painting my own paintings over again into new paintings. And I've already painted them once. Why not just print them out and put them on that way? <laughs> so that's kind of how that happened. Well, thank you. It was basically my question too, like oh, okay. how you do the collages, like you do the, the study and then you enlarge it or smaller and do you do it digitally or do you, uh, how do you collage it in? And so, so you, you are playing with your own drawings and then you, then you collage them into your painting. Yeah. It's always my own hand. And in fact, I also, the work I've collected from other artists, I paint into paintings but I have to, I have to paint them. I will not take a photograph of that and then collage it in because it has to be thank my. You. I am really, thank you. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Well, I, I think we should, uh, well, just to be mindful of, of, of Sarah's time here, I think we should, we should wrap up. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much for, for doing this. I really encourage everyone to uh, sign up for the workshop and to tell your friends about the workshop. I think it's gonna be an amazing, uh, I have a feeling a lot of work is gonna get made because one of the things that I buy, I'm just like, oh my God, she makes so much work. I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be, for days, I'm just gonna be going, I just, I don't work hard enough. I gotta do more, <laughs> I gotta do more. Um, but this is gonna be such a, a, a great workshop and um, I think you'll love Gloucester. I think you will love this, this, this town and it's, the spaces in this town. Uh, hopefully, you will you will find a lot of inspiration at too. Well, yeah, I've never been there. I'm I'm excited. We're excited to have you, uh, Ginger. Why don't you sign us off? You are the okay. Well, thanks everyone for coming, and thank you, Sarah, again. This is fascinating and amazing. And good night to everybody. <laughs>